Hi, this is Tristan Todd, Cloud Automation Specialist with Tentry. In the previous video in this series, we created some day one and day two operations as IT as a service workflows. This private cloud automation helps reduce operating costs and increase service accuracy and agility. We'll now link VMware vRealize Orchestrator with VMware's cloud management platform, also known as vRealize Automation. We can then roll out new services for our enterprise tenants so they can order new services, make changes to existing services, see what they're consuming, and see how much it all costs. Let's get started. We're going to take a look at consumption of the workflows we built in the previous video series within vCenter. So here we are on the vCenter web client. We're in a cluster, um, a host cluster, and we're requesting the day one services deployment of an Apache web server. We can do that simply by right clicking on a cluster and ordering up the orchestrator uh, service. Similar interface to the uh, workflow designer, uh, the Java client for vRealize Orchestrator. Similarly, we can request day two services for deployed objects. Here we pick up a VM, we can request that gold BCDR service. Now, most people are gonna wanna not present these workflows here, but actually do it in a self-service portal. So what we're gonna show is we'll show that day one service, but we'll do it in vRealize Automation in a self-service environment. So I'm gonna log in as an administrator into my vRealize Automation uh, uh, web server. So I log in with my administrative account and I'm presented with a, uh, a really information rich uh, interface. I can look at my service catalog and you can see I have a variety of services deployed already. We're gonna create a new service. So we're gonna uh, use what's called the anything as a service uh, framework. Going into the designer, requesting the XAAS blueprints. And you can see that we have a direct tie with vRealize Orchestrator. Here we can take that day one task we uh, completed previously. And really this is kind of a click, click next proposition. I give it a version number. We've already built the uh, user interaction and the input parameters. So we really don't need to do much here. We need to uh, make sure we publish this uh, blueprint. And then we're gonna go in and verify uh, the catalog item exists. So we can see the catalog item does exist here, the deploy Apache web server. We're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, check the entitlements on this, make sure that our users, both our administrative staff and our, uh, our uh, regular staff members in our uh, tenant um, have this uh, catalog item entitled to them. So we'll go ahead and uh, set the entitlements. Here we uh, set an entitled items, make sure that our staff users uh, can use it. And then the um, approval policy is a default approval policy where we have to have a, uh, a email uh, go out to an approver and the approver will interact with that email and uh, grant that catalog um, item request. And we'll go through that during the demo. So our entitlement's all set. Uh, now we're gonna add a logo to this catalog item because we don't want to go with the default vRealize orchestrator logo. Um, it's a pretty logo, but we'd like to uh, you know, put our, our own brand here. Go ahead and, and configure this. We'll grab a uh, pleasing to the eye logo. In this case, we'll use the Tentry logo. And we're now going to set up uh, the corresponding service. So for every catalog item, um, this XAAS blueprint, we're actually going to have a service which is used to um, actually present and then allow a user to consume the service. So we set a service, uh, give it a description, give it an icon, and then we'll actually go ahead and set uh, the service hours um, that the catalog item is available. And then we'll set a change window and we'll identify the owner of the catalog item and then the support uh, team or individual. So we're gonna set John Luther as the owner and the support team will be Dexter Morgan. So our service is all set. Let's go ahead and test this. Uh, first, we wanna make sure it shows up in the catalog and it does, there's our Apache web server. Similar interface to the vRealize uh, Orchestrator workflow designer. We give our clone a name. The default is a current crash consistent state of that template. We choose our data store and our cluster. We choose a relevant customization spec and we could mask this from the user if we so desired. And then the number of clones. We set the requested uh, CPU number and uh, memory um, entitlement. Click submit. The request is submitted, and now John Luther gets an email uh, with this request. 
he can simply open the email and uh, look at the uh, um, approve or reject option, which will spawn a new email. He sends that back to uh, vRealize Automation server. And we'll check the status of our request real quick. You can see it's in progress. It's already been approved. Check in on uh, vCenter and we can see things are underway and you can uh, see that this catalog request is uh, good to go. So the web server is built and customized to our specification and powered on. Okay, we're now gonna set up a day two service, in this case, BCDR Gold service in vRealize Automation. Again, logged as an as administrator user, I'm gonna create what's called a resource action. So it's similar to a XAAS Blueprint, but this is for a deployed object in the environment. So here I have selected my day two action, that Gold BCDR service, uh, much like the um, Previous workflow, this is kind of a click click next proposition. The user interface and the input parameters are uh, already established. So the resource action is built. Now we're going to um, set the entitlements. So we'll go ahead and publish that resource action, go into the admin option, set up the entitlements to make sure that our uh, staff members and administrators can um, access the service. So I'll go ahead and give the staff members access to this uh, action. Go ahead and do a search for uh, gold. There's our gold BCDR service. Now to test this, I wanna log in as a user that has entitled objects. So this would be a user that has um, requested previously a bunch of um, servers from the service catalog, for instance. And uh, we'll log in as a user named El Gaga. Lady Gaga logs on to the Rocket Cloud vRealize Automation portal. And she's got the catalog services available, but she's already got deployed servers. So she's actually going to go to her items list and see the list of servers deployed. Go ahead and pick this Tyrez 09 server. And the available actions now include that setup gold as a BCDR service. She'll request the service. It's approved automatically. She only needs to put in the replication target name. Once she clicks submit, the service will be rendered automatically. It's not a great idea to have an end user log into a VM store interface, but I do this just to show you that the protection policy that Lady Gaga requested has been set up on her server. And we'll uh, go ahead and verify that scheduled snapshot and replication is configured, and it has. And uh, Lady Gaga, in her list of requests, she's got a history of approval there, so she's got confirmation. All right, we now have a powerful private cloud from which we can deliver cost-effective services with enforced SLAs, predictable performance, and straightforward metering and costing. Tintree is an ideal building block of a modern enterprise private cloud. We provide well-documented, easy-to-integrate VMware-aware infrastructure that helps speed up the development of next-generation IT-as-a-service offerings. Thanks for watching.